Yeah. Welcome back to We Up University. We the U, the sports edition, baby. It's your boy Kazi back in the building, ready to run down some of these Eastern and Western semifinals basketball games. I know I touched bases with you guys last week, and of course, that was the opening rounds of the playoffs. So now we are in the semis. Again, to all my subscribers, I appreciate y'all. Continue to watch, like, subscribe, share. I really appreciate the support. But uh, let's get into it. So we're going to start off with the Bucks and the Celtics. Uh, right now, they are tied one apiece. So Minnesota, Minnesota not Minnesota. Uh, back to this week, Milwaukee went to the Boston Garden, and they did what they were supposed to do. They stole one on the road. Um, in this series, it seems like defense is key. Uh, the C's are definitely make Giannis work for his numbers. He's getting his points. His stat line looks great, but his efficiency, not so much. He's definitely having to work hard. My personal opinion, I feel like he should slow down just a little bit, but it's almost like if he does, then he wouldn't be the great freak because, you know, he's a high-motor, high-energy guy. He gets out there and he goes at it or whatever. But the Celtics and their defense, man, it's just they got hands everywhere. Um, of course, it's totally different when they were playing the Nets. KD didn't really have that body mass to go against it. Giannis, mm, he's then built himself up to be a man-man. So, you know, he's trying to go through the defense. Sometimes when I feel like he should uh, look for his teammates a little more, uh, be a bit more of a playmaker, um, That I think that personally would help with his efficiency a little more. Um, but as far as Tatum and Brown, what can you say? These guys are balling. Game one was terrible, though. Those numbers, throw those in the trash. We will never want to see those numbers again. But game two, you got to tip your head off to Jalen Brown. The man came and he played lights out. Phenomenal basketball. Um, and they won game two without the defensive player of the year. So really, what can you say? That shows you that they came, they put their stamp on the game, uh, they showed up, you know, they coach. It seems like he's going to be a great upcoming coach in this game. Um, this is his first head coaching position. However, he's doing an exceptional job with his team and they really – like grasp, grab onto his message. And they, when he say, we, we got punched in the mouth, we're going to punch back. They did just that in game two. And they punched the Bucks in the mouth, uh, punched them back in the mouth, I should say. And they came out and they got a game. You know what I mean? Like I said, the Bucks did what they were supposed to do. They stole a game on the road. And now uh, we're on our way back to Milwaukee at this particular point. You know, uh, the Bucks crowd is going to be on one, on one. You know what I mean? They're going to be ready. Um, so we're going to see what the C's could do with it. You know, if they could steal one on the road, I think personally the best game to steal, if you're going to steal on the road, is either going to be a game one or a game three. Because sometimes the team comes out and they're looking for that energy from the crowd, um, but they don't necessarily have that energy within themselves. So if the road team comes in, punch them in the mouth, it's kind of like, oh man, okay, now we got to try to figure how to get this thing back together. But again, we're going to have the Bucks and the Seas, they're going to run it back today up there in Milwaukee. But uh, moving on to the uh, Western Conference, we had uh, the semifinals of the Grizz and the Warriors. And the Warriors pretty much did the same thing that the Bucks did. Went in there, stole a game off the uh, Grizz hands. It was a tough one. It was really, really a tough one. Uh, came down to the last second. Ja had a layup to uh, win the game. Uh, Clay, whew, what can I say about Clay? I mean, he... Uh, didn't really perform like we would expect Clay Thompson to perform like. Um, and then at the end of game one, he definitely left the game open by missing those free throws at the end, which actually gave Ja the opportunity to have the uh, going home free throw to win the game, not free throw, layup to win the game. You know what I mean? But again, he messed up on the offensive end by missing those two free throws. But in the end, he came back and made an immaculate defensive play. Definitely made that, hard, that layup hard for Ja. Um, that's Ja. Shot, actually, that underhand scoop, lefty. That's what he likes to go to, which is wild as a right-handed player. But that's his go-to when he feel like he can get a basket. Um, but uh, Clay, knowing, you know, I mean, he still got, a, he still has the mentality of a defensive player after the surgeries. Sorry, shaking the screen, moving around, getting a little too excited. But uh, after the surgeries, he can't move laterally like he used to. But mentally, he's still sharp. He's still there. This series has been super, super physical. We've had two flagrant twos in the first two games and even had a suspension, which I personally disagree with. Um, it's kind of because it's almost like a two game suspension being that the flagrant two took play, uh, took place like two or three minutes into the first quarter. So he missed. 
the whole game two, and now he's going to have to miss the whole game three. I really think that was a whole lot of pressure put on the NBA by the public to make them do that. And I'm not going to question the integrity of the game because he did hit the young man, which I do feel like, you know, he did hit the uh, glove. Dylan did hit the glove. No, not the glove. I'm sorry. The glove is the dad. The mitten is the son. GP the second. Um, big shout outs to you too, though, GP. Uh, your dad was my favorite player growing up. Couldn't tell me nothing when I was on the playground. I thought I was Gary Payton Jr., even though it's really you. So either way, get well, you know what I mean? But uh, back to the court, uh, being that he got injured, I feel like that more so played a role in the uh, suspension for game three. But in any case, I personally don't agree with it. You know what I mean? It's playoff basketball. Hard fouls happen. It's very unfortunate, the results of the situation. But, you know, it happened. You know what I mean? Um, as far as Ja, like I said, he's been good. Um, but I feel like in order for them to win this series, he's almost going to have to be amazing, especially in this game three. I will say, if Memphis comes out of Oakland, and I feel like game three will be one of the best role ones to steal. But if Memphis comes out of Oakland with the win, with no dealing, hats off. But Ja's going to have to be amazing in order for them to do that. Um, again, I need Clay to be Clay on both ends of the court. But my personal opinion and one of my new favorite players that I'm starting to notice coming about, I feel like being that it is in Oakland, it's going to be a pool party. I think Jordan Poole going to come and he's going to do his thing. He's going to definitely show off. You know what I mean? But again, we have the Bucks and the Celtics, the Grizz and the Warriors running it back today. Uh, game three for both teams. So, hey, let's tune in. We have another great sports weekend. Um, but... Back to the, uh, no, we're going to stay in the West. I do apologize. We're going to stay in the West. We're going to talk about the Mavs and the Suns a little bit. Uh, CP3, my guy, definitely was showing his experience um, in the first two games. Played phenomenal. Seemed like the momentum from the closeout game just kind of rolled into this series for him. And he just played lights out game one and two. Uh, as far as game three, I feel like, it's odd to say, the experience, which I feel like made him a little more tired, uh, caused him to play the way that he played in game three. I mean, he had 12 points, four assists, and seven turnovers. That's definitely not a CP3 stat line, um, especially not in this Phoenix game, or this fit with this Phoenix team, because they have such camaraderie with each other and the way that they gel as a team, um, you wouldn't expect that. But unfortunately, um, they actually lost the turnover battle in game three, 17 to eight. So when you have 17 turnovers and the other team have eight, the likelihood of you winning that game is very, 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 very low. You know what I mean? On top of the fact that no one even scored over 20 points in the game. The closest person to score over 20 points was Devin Booker, and he had 18. So that shows you how much they didn't score. Um, but nonetheless, um, the Suns held home court. They won their two at home. Dallas, they got they won in Dallas. So, you know, right now, I mean, a lot of people are calling for a seven-game series, so... Maybe that's what we have, you know what I mean? But if the teams who continue to hold service and hold home court, I guess we'll see Phoenix in the conference finals. But we don't know that just yet. Right now, we just got past game three, and the series is 2-1, to one, Lena Phoenix way. Um, on to the uh, back to the east, Heat, Sixers, no Embiid, no dubs. It's just that simple. Yeah, you know I mean, um, as far as me, the Heat shut the teams down. In game one and two, they came out and they just was super aggressive, super assertive. You know what I mean? They had over, they, they played great team basketball. In fact, they had over 20 assists in both games, one and two, which shows the way that they were sharing the ball. Um, to me, sixth man of the year, Tyler Hero came and he did what the sixth man of the year do. He put up great numbers in the first two wins. I mean, what more can you say? You know what I mean? Jimmy Buckets, he played great in game one. Game two only gave you 15. But Bam came through and he played and he did his thing as well. So, you know, it fluctuates. Again, it shows that they have great team camaraderie. Uh, Kyle Lowry missed the game one and two and he still managed to win. Then when he came back in game three, they lost. But he was very ineffective. If I'm not mistaken, I think he only had, he didn't have any points at all. Um, don't remember exactly how many minutes he played. However, again, completely ineffective. Um, on the sixes end, like I said, it's all about Embiid, unfortunately. Um, they brought in the Harden, man, hoping that Harden could be the Robin or whatever the case may be. I just don't understand it at all. I mean, I'm looking at it like they got Batman and Embiid. I think Robin is top maxi and maybe Harden is the old man who was in the Batcave. 
yeah, I can't even remember the man name right now, but it's the, that's really what it's looking like. You know what I mean? Like this man is, he's not really giving you anything. You know what I mean? Like I, I was out moving and I checked the stat line at the end of the first quarter and I think he had 10 points. I was like, okay, look like he might play, but then I think he only finished the game with like 15 or 16 points. I'm like, what is going on with this man? You know what I mean? Like he only put up 11 shots, only 11 shots. Like James Harden only put up 11 shots in a game. That is terrible in every way that you could possibly think of. Me personally, I don't like to talk about another man money. I would not give James Harden this max contract. Like giving James Harden a max contract is almost like I get a raise at my current job for how good I worked at my last job. But they do that at, that just, no, it doesn't, it's not how it works in the world. You know what I mean? You don't get a pay raise based off of reputation. You get a pay raise based off of how hard you're working and the production that you're putting into your craft and all of that, the work that you're putting in, that's when you get a max contract. Me personally, give it to Tyrese Maxey and cut to bias. I don't understand. This man has to be the worst person ever to get a max contract. My personal opinion. Worst player, not person, player to get a max contract. You know what I mean? Give it to Tyrese Maxey. He's a young and upcoming star. I feel like he plays with great energy. You can tell, you can see his growth pretty much from his time in the league. Like he's just getting better and better and better. And he's consistently putting up better numbers than James Harden. So why would you pay James Harden more? And I mean, He's at the point now where he's just not taking care of himself. So his conditioning isn't going to get any better when you get older. Trust me, as an older man, I can attest to that. But anyhow, again, it's your boy, Kazi. It's another episode of We Up You, Sports Edition. This has been your weekend rundown of basketball. I didn't really touch on any other sports. I've been out doing a lot of things, and I've really been focusing on these NBA playoffs. They've been great. They've been entertaining. And if you're a basketball fan, you got to love it. You got to enjoy it. So, again, salute, like, share, subscribe, comment. Do all of those things that you could do on YouTube. Again, we to you. We out. Love y'all.